Well, we say praise the Lord. PCAL family, IYC. Come on. Come on. I want you to hit that share button tonight. Hit that share button. We're about to have church. Come on, put your hands together on old school. There shall be light in the evening time. Come on. The path to glory you will surely find. Through the waterway, it is the light today. There it is, it's a precious night. Come on, help see us. Young and old, repent of all your sins. And the Holy Ghost shall enter in. The evening light has come. Come on, it, it is a fact that God is Christ. Come on, help me say it. There shall be light. Come on. In the evening time. The path. The light today. Come on, Zach. Young and old. And the Holy Ghost. The light has come. It is a fact. I feel the praise right early. 
I'm trying. I, oh, I feel the praise right early. Some of you all having, yeah, you had to endure a long week, but today is Friday, and you made it to another week. Somebody just take 20 seconds and just put your hands together right at your house and hit that share button. Go! Ah, you but I made it somebody put it in the chat line stress couldn't take me out this week Woo! stress it tried but it just couldn't do it we thank God to oh God let me stop because I'm feeling the Holy Ghost let me stop we thank God for you joining with us tonight Do me a favor. Do me a favor. I know my presider been trying to do it, but I need 30 young people. I know that you're not in here, but I know you're on the other side of this camera. And just tell somebody, say, help is on the way. God bless you. I ain't going to do it. Listen, we're excited. We are excited that God is meeting us here, mm, but help is on the way. For about 20 of y'all that are typing in the chat line, help is on the way. Hallelujah. Sister Ursula is going to come. She's going to lead us. Yeah, God. She's going to lead us in the prayer, in prayer tonight. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty. Yes, yes. Come on, Sister Ursula. She's going to lead us in prayer. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Hallelujah. 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 We give you glory today, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah for allowing us to plug in, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we give you honor and we give you praise. So you are the lords of lords and you are the kings of kings. Oh God, you are sovereign and omniscient and omnipresent. God, we thank you, oh God, for who you are in our lives. Oh God, who we allow you to be in our lives. Oh God, we give you glory. God, we thank you for being our provider. We thank you for being our healer. Yes, she we thank you, God, hallelujah, for being our provider, God. Lord, we thank you for answering prayers, oh God. Before we call, you've already answered, Lord, and we say thank you for the answer, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, save somebody over the internet, God. Your word will not return to you, boy. It will accomplish what you set it out to do, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for the healing, oh God. Financially, 
emotionally, oh God, spiritually, oh God, mentally, oh God, physically, oh God. We thank you for the healer that you are, in Amandi, oh Sire, the great counselor that you are, in Amandi, oh Komandi, oh Shire. Jesus is Lord, Yashiyama. Jesus is Lord over this organization. Jesus is Lord over the churches. Jesus is Lord over our finances. Jesus is Lord, Yamandi Oshaya, over this conference. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we give you praise. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, and I'm Oshia. We thank you, oh God, and I'm Oshaya, and I'm Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Yamandi Oshaya. We thank you for the preach word. We thank you for the musicians, oh God. Anoint them afresh, oh God. Anoint the singers, oh God. In the name of Jesus. God, we give you glory. God, we give you glory for the things that you've done. Hallelujah. keep praising him hallelujah he's been better than good to us hallelujah he's been better than good to us hallelujah how many are ready to give god praise on tonight hallelujah hallelujah i'm gonna put your hands together Continue to leave me in my mouth. No matter what I no see. No matter what I see or how I feel. As long as I'm breathing. As long as I'm breathing. Oh, yes, I'm breathing. I'll bless the Lord. Oh, as long as, long as I'm breathing. Oh, yes, I'm breathing. I'll bless the Lord. Oh, magnify. Oh, magnify the Lord.
Southern States Council. I called her name last night. Um, Sister Carla Qual. She's she's coming with our first word on tonight. And then listen, I'm excited tonight to have our auxiliary bishop, Bishop George also Dawson in the house. Oh right. can we celebrate? Our new appointed youth auxiliary bishop. Can we do that tonight? Come on, let me see the hearts and light go crazy for our bishop. So after you have, we have heard the first word spoken. The next voice you would hear will be that of our auxiliary bishop, Bishop George. Dawson, in Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord, everybody. We bring you greetings from the Eastern and Southern States Council. Tonight, where our diocesan bishop is Bishop John T. Leslie, Jr. Tonight, we give honor to our presiding bishop, Bishop Gates, and his staff on tonight. We also give honor to my council chairman, Bishop Gilbert Edwards, and my bishop, Suffolk and Bishop Allen Fleet. We greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus on tonight. And to our IYC Youth Chairman, Pastor Sears, we greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. And we just thank God for just being here one more time for another youth conference, IEEE 2021. Amen. Amen. I count it an honor and a privilege just to be able to stand before you all tonight and deliver the word of God. I'm not going to be before you all long because I know I'm on an assignment, so I want to get out your way. And just a quick word of prayer on tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, O oh God, we thank you right now, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for giving us the opportunity to come before you once again in your name, O oh God. O oh God, I ask right now that you decrease color, O oh God, and increase you, O oh God, that you rise up in me, O oh God, and set with us, says the Lord, O oh God, on tonight, O oh God, that they might open their ears to receive the word, O oh God, that they might hear what you are saying to your people on tonight, O oh God, that you might get the glory, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we ask, O oh God, that you touch each and every heart and each and every one that is listening tonight to this broadcast, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Once again, we say thank you, and we give you glory and honor, and we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight, we're coming from the topic, the theme for this weekend, get plugged in, back to the source. Amen. And that's coming from John 6 and 63, and it reads, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. And if I can just draw from that subject just for a moment, plugged in back to the source, if I can just draw from that, I would add as a subtopic, will you stand your built for this? Will you stand? Stand in the midst of it all. Will you stand because you're built for this? And when I was asked to um, give a word tonight, I really didn't know which way I was going to go. And then the Lord dealt with me concerning our youth and how so many things come up against the youth and how it's time to go back to the source. Go back to the source, you guys. And when I looked plugged, when you're plugged into something, that means closely connected to something. And we know that something or that someone is Jesus, back to the source. And I can recall when I first got saved and how we were so on fire for God and how everything that touched us, we were so easy to be offended if it wasn't the right way of doing things. But how we have gotten away from the old way. And when I say the old way, I'm not talking about traditions. I'm talking about laying back at the altar, seeking God daily, coming into his presence with thanksgiving. We have gotten away with so much down throughout the years. When was the last time we had a service where we sing true deliverance just off of praise and praise alone? So tonight, I just want to encourage the youth that no matter the situation, no matter what it looks like, will you stand? Will you stand when all odds are against you? Will you stand when you just have your back against the wall? Will you stand in the midst of your tears? Will you stand? And I thought about it and I said, well, Lord, sometimes, and I, when I minister, I always say when you get a word, it got to come to yourself. It got to hit you first. When God gives you a message, he gives it to you first. So as I'm ministering to you on tonight, I'm ministering to myself that even in my darkest moment, will I stand? Will I take a stand or will I turn away? And in order to get back to the source, you have to stand. You have to stand for something. And that something is Jesus. Because even when things turn away, it does not mean that you're always in sin when things are going wrong. It doesn't mean that you're always not living right because things are happening. 
sometimes God just allows things to happen so that he can build you to where he needs you to be for your next season. And when I began to look and he just brought out Job, Job was an upright man. He did things according to God. And when the scripture, God gave permission for Job to be tried. And even when he tried Job, Job took a stand. He did not fall. He did not stop trusting that God was going to do just what he said he was going to do. So tonight, young people, I know some of us are in a season right now of uncertainty and not knowing which way to look. But stand still and look up. Look up to God. Know that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ever ask or think. But how are you going to stand if you're not connected? How are you going to stand if you're not plugged in? How are you going to stand if you don't know his name? So tonight, I charge every young person, and not just the young, because this for the young and the old. Some of us have been coming to church time after time, yet we are still in the same place. But we have gotten into a thing where we know how to do church so well that we do it so well and we leave out the same way that we entered in. God said, will you stand? In the midst, will you stand? Even when you feel like you're going to fall, your feet are still planted on the ground. You might bend, you might turn just a little, but he never lets you fall, which means he's still having you stand in a position where he is still able to help and carry you through. God will not bring you to something that he will not carry you through. Whatever God brings you to, he will carry you through it. So, if you want to be plugged in, you have to stand. Stand on the word of God. Stand knowing everything is not going to go just how I want it to go. Some of us are struggling. Some of us are battling depression. Some of us are battling suicidal thoughts. But God says, stand. Will you trust me just that much that even in the mist, in the darkest hour, will you stand? Will you trust and know that I'm going to carry you through? Job, he took, they took everything from Job. Friends even began to doubt. And that's just like some of us. When things are not going right, when hell break loose, friends want to turn away and say, well, maybe they doing this and maybe they doing that. But God say, in the midst of it all, stand. I hear what they're saying. I see what they're saying. I gave them the permission to do what they are doing. Will you stand? Because I have built you for this. I built you for this season. I built you to endure. Will you stand? When the odds are against you. I know how it is to be a young person. I know how it feels to be left out. I know the feeling to be like you're not a part of the in crowd. But if you take a stand, take a stand for righteousness, take a stand for holiness, take a stand. It is time that we, as the church, become one. It's time out playing church. It's time out just coming. And as I stated, we do church so well now. And we're so protocoled of how things should go. But if we want true deliverance to take place, I dare you go back to the altar. I dare you go back to the altar. Young people, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care who's talking about you. I don't care what the situation may be. Let's go back to the altar. Let's get plugged in. Let's stay connected to the source. Because without the source, you're nothing. Without the source, you're unable to stand. Without the source, you're able, unable to make it to your next destination that God is calling you to. Are you plugged in? Are you connected? Do he know your name? 
when you're plugged in, it's not just a one-person relationship. It is a two-way streak. So when you're plugged in and when you're connected to the source, that means not only do I know God, but he knows my name. And just like a mother and a father, when they hear their child cry, he comes because he knows your name, because you're connected. I know things don't feel good. And I know some might be in the darkest hour. And I know some might be in the fight of their life on tonight. And I know it's some that might just feel like giving up on tonight. But after it's all said and done, will you stand? Will you stand and make Jesus the forefront of your life? Make Jesus the priority of your life. In the midst of your tears, make Jesus first. And I guarantee you that even in your battles, you'll find peace. When you're connected and when you're plugged in, in your trials and your tribulation, you're able to find rest. No, it might not feel good, but because I'm connected and because I'm plugged into the source, I know God is going to deliver. So while I'm in the season of waiting on him to deliver, I have to stay connected. I have to stay plugged in because he is the lifeline. And without being plugged into the source, then you're spiritually dead. So tonight, young people, I encourage you, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what your friends might say, no matter what the enemy might try to whisper in your ears, remember that you have the power and the authority to speak to every situation that comes before you because it's the word. He said after you receive the, power, the gift of the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power. So tonight as we stand and get connected, I pray that we stand in spite of how it looks. I ask Jesus to stretch out in us and give us the power and the wisdom to answer the call, the grace to obey your will that you have concerning us. And I ask God that you shift everything in our lives that is holding us back from being connected, that you shift everything that is keeping us from doing the assignment that you have called us to be. Young people, it's our season. It's our time to stand. To stand for the word of God. And if you don't remember anything else that I have said on tonight, just remember to stay plugged in to the source, which is Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. <laughs> Come on, if he's been good to you, give God praise tonight. Come on, he's worthy. He's worthy of all the praise. And he's worthy of all the glory. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Help me lift him up. Help me lift him up. Come on and help me lift him up. Oh, help me lift him up. Oh, you're worthy. God, you're worthy. You are. Waking me up this morning, Lord, I thank you for making a way out of no way. God, give grace, send your mercy, let your will be done. My soul said yes. My 
young people get up in your house mom and daddy and tell everybody in the house I feel a victory coming it'll be here in the morning whining and sing a song say ain't no need to worry what the night gonna bring why cause it'll be all over in the morning there's a 24 hour turnaround and God can turn it Tell somebody I'm about to go get it. I'm about to go get it. I ain't gonna keep asking about it. I'm gonna go. I'm about to go get it. Somebody shout, put it in your downline. I'm about to go. know what y'all doing at home, but they shouting in here. They shouting around here. Uh, uh, they shouting. 
around here. It's, it's churchy up in here. They done picked up a tambourine. And it, Lil Mitchell done picked up a tambourine and went to hit it. Sister Christian then sang her song. The praise team that did they thing. What y'all gonna do? What y'all gonna do? I triple E. You gonna praise him at the house? I know you ain't at church, but you can dance at the house. Come on. The King of Glory shall come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. I want to take up an offer. Watch it, Lady Mitchell. Watch it. Watch it, sing. We got to take up an offer, y'all. We got to take up an offer. Let me give you. Let me give you the scripture that the Lord gave me before we take this offering up. I just heard the young lady, the first speaker, talking about Job. And you know Job's argument was this, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Give somebody a high five around here and tell them, I got to trust God. With what's a going down, now I got to trust him. I got to believe that every bill will be paid. I got to believe that. I got to believe that every bill will be paid. I got to believe that. And you know what else? I got to believe that whatever I need him to do is already worked out. And it's already done. Can we celebrate Bishop Dawson tonight? Our auxiliary bishop and bishop, they're still sewing. And while they're sewing our, our choir, they're going to come uh, tonight. And before they come, the next voice that you will be hearing will be that of Bishop James Nelson. He's a great friend and brother of this organization and of mine as well. And I'm excited that he's coming to be with us tonight. So right after the choir, the next voice that you would hear would be that of our speaker on tonight, Bishop James Nelson. After him, Bishop Dawson is going to come and he's going to do our altar call on tonight in Jesus' name.
Peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord to everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. Today I am super excited to be able to join IEEE, District Elder Sears, and to the entire staff. I want to bring greetings, of course, to the presiding bishop, Bishop Lambert Gates, and to his entire cabinet. And it is always an honor and a privilege to be able to stand and to enjoy this moment with you on this evening. I am excited because I believe that God has something in store for us, and I am looking forward to see what God is going to say. Now listen, virtual audience, I want you to like, comment, tag, and share. Let somebody know that we're on tonight. We are getting back to the source. We're being plugged in because we don't want to miss anything that God's getting ready to do. We're at the close of this year, but we're getting ready to cross over into a brand new year, which is going to introduce for us, it's going to bring for us some many great things. And I'm telling you, I am excited about what God's getting ready to do. Would you do me a favor? I, I wanna get right to the word. Uh, I know we're in the virtual space, and so I will not uh, belabor the time. But I want us to get ready to turn our hearts and our minds uh, to the epistle of Romans, uh, chapter number seven. And we're going to just read two verses from the epistle of Romans, chapter number seven. There's an old song as I'm preparing and we're getting ready to go into it. But there's an old song that says, I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. And then the writer says, me now my savior i come glory to god to thee i, I want us real quick will you just just help me real quick i need thee i need thee i need the oh i want you to draw your hearts and your mind I need thee. god's getting ready to do something for you every hour every glory to god. hour i feel the power of god I Oh, bless me oh, now. Oh, bless, bless me, now. me now. My Savior. My Savior. My Savior. I come. I come. I come. One more to time, then we get ready to pray. I, I need. Father, hear us. Hear us today, Father. We need you. Father, every hour we need you. Every Can't do this without you. Don't want to make it without you. Even tonight, Father, bless us. Bless us right oh, now. Oh, bless us. Good 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 me now. I feel the power of God. Something is breaking over you. Something is breaking over your life. God's getting ready to shift. God's getting ready to move. Something. Ready to happen. To, to thee. To Father, thee. here we are. Lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubt. Thank you, Father, for this last month of the year. Father, that's our cry. That's our prayer. We need thee. That's how we come to you, Father, humbly tonight. Because we need you. Ah, yeah. Glory to God. Father, that's what we ask God to bless us. Father, we have confidence that you have the power to bless. We have confidence that you have the ability to shift whatever we're going through. We have confidence that you can fix whatever's broken. So tonight, Father, we come sitting at your feet. I thank you for this IEEE. I thank you for the leadership. I thank you for the leadership of this organization. But God, we need you now. So Father, as we humble ourselves, forgive us, wash us afresh, apply the blood, of your son Jesus Christ. How ya by? Kato Bosha. God, hallelujah. Count us worthy now, Father. Give us ears to hear. We bind the hand of the adversary. We bind everything that's not you. We release everything that is you. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, speak to us now. Hi. Speak to us, Lord. Give us ears to hear. Give us hearts that are ready to receive. Give us minds that can comprehend. Give us spirits that are open. 
I pray that you'll anoint my eyes, ears, and lips to only hear, see, and say what you have appointed for this moment. In Jesus' name, and we say amen. Romans 7, very familiar passage of scripture, 24 and 25. And look at what it says. It says, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the body of death. Look at verse 25. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself serve the law with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. I, I want to talk, I want to talk uh, today, tonight, this evening, whenever you're watching this. I know this is live now, but you may be watching the replay of this. I want to talk from the topic, the psychology of deliverance. I want to talk about the psychology of deliverance. When, when, we, when we talk about deliverance, I want to be clear uh, about a couple of things. Deliverance is God taking us from something and bringing us to something. Deliverance is us coming from something but going to something. I want to be clear about this because as we move forward, I need you to understand that deliverance is not deliverance until you get to your two, wherever it is that you're supposed to be going to. Look at what God says to the children of Israel. He says, I am bringing you out of Egypt and I am taking you into the land of Canaan. So deliverance is not complete until you get to a specific place. Why is that important? It is important because we need to understand tonight the thought process, because that's what psychology is. The psychology of something is the thought process behind it, the mind of something. And so I want to be clear that my objective tonight is to deal with the mindset of God, not so much the person being delivered, but the mind of the, the, the deliverer, why it is necessary. So I want to first prophesy, declare, announce that God is bringing you from and he's about to take you to something. Let, let, let me be clear. Let me be clear. I, I want to even make that more specific. I want to say to you that God's getting ready to deliver you from an old season, a limited place. I want to prophesy that God is getting ready to take you from bondage. I want to prophesy that God is getting ready to snatch you up out of whatever has been holding you back. But he's about to take you into your place of promise, into your place of destiny. He's about to bring you into a place of liberation and freedom. He's getting you out of, but he's getting ready to take you into. Sometimes the warfare that we experience is the enemy being clear, not knowing all the details, but the enemy being clear that we're getting ready to go somewhere. Would you, would you do me a favor? I won't bother you too much tonight, I promise you. But just in the comments, would you just put them there, I'm going somewhere. I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere. Let, let's, let's go deeper into this now. So if the psychology then is the thought process behind the mindset of something, then what I want to be clear is one of the things that is happening around us is trying to gain understanding of the why. That there's so much that's happening with COVID. Uh, one of the things that has happened with the church, and we're not even out of it now. That's why we're even virtual in this space. Uh, that's one of the things that's happening even with the church and, and, and people around this. People are trying to understand why. There's so much death. There's so much trauma that's happening to people, and people are trying to understand why. When you, when you go for something and it doesn't work out the way you want it to, you, you're in a place that you didn't think that you would be at this point. People are trying to understand why. It is in the grasping 
of understanding. It is in the grasping of understanding the why that helps us to accept the walking out and it helps us to make peace with the what and the how. Let me say it one more time. When I get a grasp of the why, it helps me to walk out and it helps me to make peace with the what and the how. All right? Let's, 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 let's make sense of this. Let's make sense of this. When I get the concept, all right, let's use the children of Israel for example. The Bible says that God led them a roundabout way. Now, if we put ourselves in the children of Israel's place, while we are being led the roundabout way, we want to know why. Why are we going this way when there's a more direct way to get me to where I need to be? The problem is that it is afterward that we get God to explain to us why. The Bible says he led them. The Deuteronomy talks about them, him, them being led a roundabout way. Psalms says he led them the right way. Here's, here's the reason why. The why, the psychology behind it, the mindset behind it is simple. God says, I know what you're ready for and what you're not ready for. And God says that if I took you the quicker way, you would have come into contact with things that would have discouraged you, overwhelmed you, and would have driven you back to what I just got you out of. So I took you the longer way to ensure that you get to where it is that you're supposed to go instead of taking you the quicker way and doing you some harm. <laughs> so it is understanding the why that helps me to grasp and have peace with the what and the how. Let's, let's go a little bit further now. Now, when you deal with this, when you deal with this, and, and you deal with it even from a place of society, when people don't understand and when God does not readily give us the clarity of the why in a time frame that we think God should give it to us, then people are left up to themselves with their own personal theories, ideologies, and contrived thoughts. As a result, due to their lack of godly insight, secular humanism comes into play. When you deal with secular humanism, it is, it is um, the thought process of individuals thinking that they understand. It is the thought process that individuals themselves without the input of God can make sense of their life, that they can do what they need to do, that they have the intellect, the wherewithal without the input of God to be able to handle anything. And without the input of God, they come up with their own conjectures as to what things may need to be. That's why even in our preaching, even in our preaching, if you listen to most of the preaching that's being done, most of the preaching that's being done is not necessarily gospel or even biblical preaching. What it is, is thoughts, topics, and ideas being undergirded by Scripture. I know I'm getting a little trouble, but I'm moving ahead. It is thoughts, ideas being undergirded by Scripture that may or may not be in context that helps to validate a motivational speech or something of empowerment. But the reality of it is there is so much of our own intellect into it that, that we're leading people away from some fundamentals. But tonight, I believe that we got to get back to the basics. And I believe, I want y'all to hear me in the context of what I'm saying, and I believe that God still has the answers. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I, I feel God helping us tonight. Uh, I, I believe God still has all the answers. And so when we begin to deal with this then, then we put this in context of where we are. I, I believe that because of the nature of what we're dealing with, and I believe because of the challenges that we are facing, uh, your theme is so relevant about getting back to the source, getting plugged back in, because we have been left up to ourselves long enough. 
We've been left up to our own thought process of trying to understand and trying to figure it out. And then we project that on other people and, and we're creating. The Bible says something like this. The Bible says, with your mouth you honor me, with your hearts you say, uh, uh, you, with your mouth you worship me. Uh, he says, uh, but your heart is far from me. But this is why he says it. He says, because of the traditions that have been taught by men. In other words, because if I come into my own concept that is not godly inspired, I promise I'm getting ready to preach the text and all of this is relevant to the text. When I come into my own thought process that is not divinely inspired and then I begin to teach or begin to proclaim or begin to talk and speak it and project it on other people, I am now, Lord have mercy, um, given them insight that adds to their own mind and then they come up with their own thing adding to what I've told them and then they pass it on to somebody else and it, begin, it begins to grow but the problem is there is no God in the mix. So it is the source getting back to some fundamentals that gives us understanding. I, I, want, I want to talk to us tonight because I believe that in the book of Romans Paul has some insight that gives us understanding of the why. I, I, I want to help you understand. Churches now don't even really talk much about the Holy Ghost. Uh, we've gotten fancy and we call it Holy Spirit. H however you label it, the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, the reality of it is um, many people preach the Holy Spirit as an accessory more than a necessity. I, I, I want to share with you tonight that, 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 that Paul begins to challenge us of the necessity of the power of the Holy Ghost. I, I want to help you to understand that, that, that the Bible says, Jesus says in John chapter number 6, he said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. You got to get this. But what he was doing was through the power of, of the Spirit of God. In, in John, further in John, he tells them that the works that I do, the same works shall ye do, but it is through the endowment and the endowment of the power of the Holy Ghost. So, so preacher, what does this have to do with the psychology of deliverance? Well, Paul helps us to understand. He gives us the thought process of why the source that we need to plug back into is the power of God, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. He gives us understanding in Romans chapter number 7 because left up to ourselves, we're in trouble. I, I challenge every believer, especially new believers, to read the book of Romans, the entire book. Because uh, the first few chapters up through chapter number 9, it, it gives us the understanding of, please get this, our relationship and salvation. It gives us understanding that everybody has sinned and come short of the glory of God. I don't have time to walk off through this because I really want to get to the text. Uh, but, but Paul teaches us, he teaches us um, that we should not continue in sin, that grace sh should abound. He tells us that the wages of sin is death. He tells us that through faith, we have been justified by God. He takes us through baptism, and we believe in the baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then he even takes us into a place of being filled with the Holy Ghost. But then he doesn't leave us there. He gives us understanding in 9 through 11 of, of the place of how we have been engrafted in and how for a moment Israel was put to the side so that the Gentiles, which would include us, could be included. And then he's coming back around full circle and bringing Israel and as one big group, we're going to be one body. We're going to be one people. Lord have mercy. I I'm so glad that, that God did what he did and I'm so glad that I'm saved. I don't know about anybody else, but are you glad that you are saved? Glory to God. Um, and, and then once he teaches us and gives us understanding of, of how God 
put Israel to the side just for a little bit in order to include the Gentiles, but Israel's still going to be saved and we're all going to end up being saved together. He teaches us in 12 through 15 and 16, he teaches us about practical application as believers. He teaches us that once I do get saved, then there's some practical things, that there's a way to apply my salvation to my everyday life. So I need you to understand this. The Holy Ghost does not just come to help us to quicken and, and speak in tongues only, but the Holy Spirit helps us to live life. Now, it is in chapter number 7 that Paul introduces a conflict to us. He, he introduces to us, because we always talk about sin, but he introduces to us <laughs> the, 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 the power of sin in us. What he begins to tell us is that he opens up by saying, sin has such a hold on us. I promise I'm going somewhere. We're going to have just a little church in a minute. Um, he said, sin had such a hold on us that it took death to free us from the grips of sin. That's why we thank God for Calvary, because Jesus died for us that he might condemn sin in the flesh. And on Calvary, when he died, he broke the power of sin. However, however, in the life of a believer, in order for us to be free from sin, give this now, Jesus, through his power, he defeated sin, but there must be a dying to sin, or there must be a denial of oneself that frees us from the power of sin. In other words, I, I, I promise it's going to make sense in a second. In other words, what, what, what Paul teaches us is, I was locked to this thing. He says that we were slaves to it. That means I, I wasn't free uh, to get away from it. I was tied to it. I was locked up in it. Hallelujah to God. But through the power of the Holy Ghost and through the death of Jesus Christ, he broke off the chains of sin, broke off the power of sin, so that when I give my life to Christ, hallelujah, that, that I believe and I'm baptized and I'm filled with the Spirit of God, then the power of sin is broken off of my life. But the challenge is the power of sin is broken, but the presence of sin is still there. Now, hear me. I, I'm not highlighting sin, but I want to give you some understanding. Paul teaches us uh, about the power of the law, and he teaches us something that sin did. Here, here's where I want to go tonight, and, and I'm going to get in trouble for about five minutes, and then, 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 then I'll make sense of it, and we can have church and clothes. Paul says... He says something to us in, in this because the, the text that I've read, it, it deals with the battle that we have. He, he deals with the fact, he, he says, oh, wretched man. He's talking about, I'm in a dreadful state. I'm in, I'm in a, a vicarious place. I'm, I'm in a state that is so bad. It's, it's challenging. It's frustrating. It's, it's debilitating. I, I'm, I'm in a place uh, that, that the truth be told, I can't even get free from it myself. He says, I'm in a place, he says, that, that this place is miserable. It, it's, it's hard because I find myself being pulled. I, I find myself, hallelujah, I find myself be, being torn. He says, because um, I'm, I have a desire to want to do right. He says, but how to perform it? He says, I, 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 can't, I can't seem to get it right. It, it, it has nothing to do with desire. Let me, let me pause for a moment and, and tell us that we cannot be so critical of people when they are dealing with their own internal battle. I find that sometimes we as the church have become so critical of people that, that we condemn people and we judge people in the midst of their fight, in the midst of their struggle. Number one, I think we forget where God brought us from. Paul said, but such were some of you. God delivered us secondarily, I need you to understand that, that we cannot be so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good to understand that Paul says it doesn't mean I'm a bad person. It, it doesn't mean I have the wrong motive, but the problem is 
I'm trying to free myself from something. I have a desire to do it, but within me, I don't have the power to overcome the thing that's trying to get me to do what's wrong. Paul himself says, I want to please God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel, I feel the power of God. Paul says, I want to please God. I, 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 I want to live right. I, I want to operate with integrity. I, I want to be upright. I want to be a man or woman of character. I want to make sure that I'm a pillar in the community. I want to make sure that I am an example. But the problem is, every time I go to do good, evil is always present. And he says, I'm at a place where I'm miserable because I'm tired of the fight. I'm tired of the wrestle. I'm tired of this. And, and he says, who is going to deliver me from the body of this death? Can, 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 can we just go deep for just a moment? And, and, and then I'll close. Here is the reason why there needed to be deliverance. Here's the reason why there needed to be deliverance. Here's the thought process, process behind God sending his son and then releasing the power of the Holy Ghost. Because Paul says something that I think we overlook, and I don't think that we preach it enough. Paul says, the law, this, this is, this is uh, uh, around verse number 8. He says, the law produced sin. Now, I want you to get it. He says, the law produced sin. He did not say that the law caused me to sin. He said the law produced sin. Number one, let me tell you what sin did. Sin, <laughs> here's where I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> sin was always there. But the problem is we did not realize sin was there. I, I love crime shows. I love crime shows. I love anything that's investigative. I love that kind of stuff. Who done it? And and one of my favorites are the CSI, CSI uh, Miami, CSI. They just brought CSI Vegas back, and and it's interesting because uh, they have this process of discovering blood and DNA, and and what they do is they 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 do something where they add a chemical called luminol. They add this chemical called luminol, and and luminol has one function. It is to bring out what is there. The chemical does not change the composition. The chemical does not add anything to it. The only thing that it does is exposes what is and causes it to come out. <laughs> Ooh, we about to get in trouble. <laughs> you you got to get this now. You got to get this. Um, something called binary composition. That, that, that means something that is made up of a substance, uh, more than one substance, of at least two substances. So I need you to understand that you and I are binary compositions. We, we, we are made up of heaven and earthly substances. If we go back to Genesis chapter number one, <laughs> y'all stick with me, I promise. I'm turning the corner now. If we go back to Genesis chapter number one, you would know that when God makes man, he makes man. Genesis chapter 2 gives us understanding. He forms man of the dust of the earth. He forms man of the dust of the earth. But then the Bible says he breathes into man, into his nostrils, the breath of life, the, the, the ruach. So God, God creates man from the earth. Uh, and then he breathes into man his breath. He breathes himself into man. So we have earthly composition and we have heavenly composition. Now, I want y'all to get this. Uh, so here it is now. We are made up of heaven and earth. I could dance right there. I, I, got, I got heaven and I got earth in me. I got, I, I'm made of the duality of both. I got, I got heaven Shammai. And, and I got earth. That, that, see, the heaven part of me always desires to please God, but I got, I got, a, I got this other part of me. Now, let, let's go deeper in this. Let's go deeper in this um, because one of the things that I had to uh, come into the car, uh, awareness of is we've been giving the devil too much credit. 
<laughs> I can't get no help right there. We, we, we've been giving the devil too much credit. Preacher, what are you talking about? Um, yes, I understand who the devil is. I understand who Satan is. But can I tell y'all something? Um, when, when we deal with Adam and Eve and, and the fall of man and the decision that they made, I, I want y'all to hear this now, and the decision that they made, we say the devil made me do it. Um, even Adam, he, he, he says, the woman you gave me caused me to do it. The woman says, the serpent made me do it. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Um, at this point, there was no evil in them if they were made in the likeness and the image of God. <sighs> well, I know I'm going to get in trouble. Um, at this point, Hallelujah to God. If, if they were made in the likeness and the image of God, Adam was the expression of God. If that be the case, and Eve was made of the same substance that Adam was made of, that means then at this point there was no evil in them. So something in them caused them um, to make the decision that they made. I want to say to us today that it is not the devil that did it. I want to say to you, it is not the devil that did it. You got to get this now. Um, Paul says uh, that sin used the law as an opportunity to make itself exceedingly sinful. Paul said, I didn't even know it was wrong until sin Lord had mercy through the law told me what was wrong. He says, he uses Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5 where it says, do not covet. I promise I'm almost there now. Where it says, do not covet. He said, I did not know it was wrong to covet until the law said, thou shalt not covet. And then sin used what was good to introduce itself to me. All right, here we go now. Here we go. I, I, I want y'all to stay with me because I'm, I'm in the text. So here's what happened then. When, when Adam and Eve, who are made in the likeness and the image of God, they have a conversation with Satan, with the serpent. She does. She has a conversation with the serpent. And what happens is all the serpent does is brings a consciousness and brings an awareness to something. But it is Eve that makes the decision. So I want to say to you, you got to get this, that, that, that what happens is our decisions expose, y'all better get this now, um, which nature I'm given to. Because if they made a decision to do what God told them not to do, but they were made in the image and the likeness of God, that meant it was already in them to have the propensity to do wrong. Ooh, okay, maybe this is too deep for a Friday night. Huh. That, that means um, that even though God made them, within them, they possessed the propensity to do what was wrong. They had the potential to do what was right, but they also had the potential to do what was wrong. All that they needed was the opportunity and the exposure and given the choice, hallelujah, then we would know which one they would lean into. Yep, they, we would know which one to lean into. I want to talk to some of you tonight because uh, there are many of you that are watching me that, that, that are dealing with some reality. Yeah, you saved, you're anointed, but, but what has happened is uh, that you have been exposed to some stuff. All right, let me, let me say this uh, before we have some church. Y'all don't be so quick to judge people. Don't be so quick to put your mouth on people because some of you, the only thing that you haven't had yet is exposure to some stuff. You, you were sheltered. You were covered. But, but the reality of it is put in the right circumstance, put in the right place, given the right opportunity, you might make a wrong decision too. Y'all don't, don't want to go with me here. <laughs> Glory to God. I've learned to be honest with myself that there are some things, hallelujah, I feel the power of God because the devil don't want y'all to hear this. There are some things, the reality of it was opportunity and occasion led us to make the wrong decision. 
So you got to get this now. Um, something had to be in Eve that would cause her to lean into uh, the wrong decision. I, I, I want to help y'all with this. So all the devil did was make a suggestion that brought a consciousness to something that was already there. I'm closing now. Uh, that all the devil did was made a suggestion about what was already there. I want to say to you tonight uh, that within us, there's some stuff that's already there. Yep. There's some stuff in us that's, that's already there. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you're evil. It just means I got some stuff in me. I, I, I know you're the bishop, but you got some stuff with you. I, I know you're the evangelist, but you got some stuff with you. I, I know you're the prophet of God, but you got some stuff with you. But, but tonight, God understood that, that even though I made them in my likeness and even though I made them in my image, there was within them desires and appetites. And if not governed properly, it would cause them to lean into, hey, glory to God, I feel the power of God. It would cause them to lean into the wrong thing. So tonight, uh, I, I promise I'm closing now, but, but tonight, here is where I want to come. Um, so what happens is, uh, if I've got this thing in me, when Adam and Eve leaned into the wrong thing, what it did was, it empowered sin. And then when sin is empowered and it is passed down from generation to generation, it becomes even more powerful. So now, here it is. David said, I've been born in sin and I'm shaped in iniquity. And Paul gives us understanding that, yes, there's some stuff that's in you, but you could not defeat it in and of yourself. Paul says, it's there. Y'all don't want to hear me preach, but, but it's there. Yes, 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 it's there. You, you just need to be introduced to it, but it's there. You, you may have never been exposed to it, but it's there. That's why sometimes we surprise ourselves by some of the things that we've done because it's, it's in there. But, but here's the problem. If there is a resident agent in me that is already there, Lord have mercy, then what happens is I've got to have something greater within what's already there in order to set me free. I'm, I'm done now. So this is leading us to verse number 24. Paul says, I'm wretched because I want to be free. But the problem is I, I need something greater then what's already in me. Tonight, I just want to tell somebody that God sees you. Would you just put in the comments real quick and say, God sees me. God is more mindful of you than what you realize he is. God is more sensitive to you than what you realize he is. So since God understood the, the struggle internally with man, then God understood that man could not deliver himself from himself. See, you got to understand it's bigger than being free from the power of sin. It's being free from the power of me. <laughs> Let me say it one more time. I'm done, y'all. It's bigger than being free from the power of sin. It's being free from the power of me. See, the problem is without the Holy Ghost, I cannot defeat myself. But I thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost. So Paul said, I was a wretched man. But I'm so glad that God did not leave me as I was. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the power of this sinful place? He said, but I thank God for my Lord Jesus Christ. As I close tonight, I just want to tell somebody that God sent his son. They called his name Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He bled and he died yeah, to buy my pardon. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad that he lives today. 
when Jesus died he broke the power of sin but when Jesus died he repositioned us to be able to receive the power of the Holy Ghost so when I talk about getting plugged back in it means I've now been repositioned to receive the power of God that now has the ability not just to free me from sin because Jesus already did that but what the Holy Ghost does it helps me to deal with that nature that's within so when the Holy Ghost came God reconnected us when the Holy Ghost came God reestablished us when the Holy Ghost came God re-empowered us when the Holy Ghost came God reunited us when the Holy Ghost came God repositioned us so now I don't just conquer sin but now I can deny and I can discipline now I can overcome thanks be unto God my time is up but I feel the power of the Holy Ghost thank me unto God that's the psychology I couldn't deliver myself I couldn't free myself I couldn't get me out of it when I go to do good evil was there even with the Holy Ghost there are some of you that are struggling but I stopped by to tell you that's why you gotta lean in to the Holy Ghost the Bible says that if you lean to the flesh you're gonna produce fruit of the flesh but if you lean into the Holy Ghost you'll produce fruit of the Holy Ghost I stop by to tell somebody that Paul said you've been delivered God sent his son that released the Holy Ghost and now I'm free so I say to tell somebody God through Jesus Christ I got the Holy Ghost yes so when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were in one place on one accord and the heavens opened and there sat upon each of them cloven tongues like as a fire and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost done good evening I triple E but as I close I just want to tell you I got it I got it something about the Holy Ghost I can't explain but I got it I got it I got it I got it lies at the door trouble lies at the door circumstance lies at the door temptation lies at the door even James said a man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust but aren't you glad that even when I get ready to mess up even when I get ready to go the wrong way I ain't just talking about sin like fornication and stuff but I'm talking about sin missing the mark I'm talking about not doing what God wants you to do you heard God called you you told you you felt God pulling you to consecrate you feel the tongue of God telling you which way to go but you still don't want to do it there's an internal struggle you feel the fight within because something is still there but tonight God's getting ready to release the Holy Ghost there's getting ready to be a refilling there's getting ready to be a recharging there's getting ready to be a refreshing there's getting ready to be a re-empowering there's getting ready to be a refilling God God, if I shadow, 
Hold up a hot shot. I'm done. My time is way up. My time is up. My time is up. But tonight, there's getting ready to be a refilling. They, they, they said, this, this old song, and, I, and I'm done. Just give me two seconds, and I'm, and I'm closing with prayer. But there's an old song that said, I got it, I got it. Something about the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I got it. Tonight, we can shout a dance about the Holy Ghost because I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. But tonight, here's what I want to get to. God didn't leave you to yourself. And I know that some of you may retract yourself from this because you're like, he's preaching the Holy Ghost, I already got it. No, I need you to hear me. Tonight is about a re-infusion. So if you don't have it, you need to get it. But tonight is about a re-infusion. So Peter tells them, repent, because refreshing is coming. In Acts chapter number four, I pray and I close. By you glory to God. The Bible said when they prayed, they were filled again. Father, in Jesus' name, let there be a repentance and an acknowledgement tonight of the truth, number one, of what's in us. But secondarily, Father, I pray tonight that this has brought an awareness and now a receptivity to the power of the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. Lord, while some may have been turned off by this, the reality is, God, we need the Holy Ghost. So tonight, we repent, we confess, we acknowledge. That's why we started off saying, Lord, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. So tonight, sin the Holy Ghost again, Hishamah. Send the Holy Ghost again. Send the Holy Ghost again. We can't do it without it. Some of us, Lord, are stuck in the battle. We're stuck in between. We feel like Paul, a oh, wretched man. We need a fresh touch. So tonight, Lord, I pray for the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, we're not left up to our secular humanism. We're not left up to ourselves, but send the Holy Ghost again. Father, let there be repentance now. Let there be a refilling now. Touch the pastors again. Feel the bishops again. Feel the leaders again. Fill your young people again. Fill us again, Lord. Fill us again, Lord. Fill us again. Fill us again. I'm getting ready to turn the service back over into the hands, glory to God, of Pastor Shears and the leadership. But I want you wherever you are right now and say, Lord, fill me again. Lord, fill me again. Lord, fill me again. I got some stuff in me. Fill me again. I can't get over this. Fill me again. I can't beat this by myself. Fill me again. Hey, 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 hey. In my shot. I gotta go. I gotta go. You're not bad. You just need another touch. You're not bad. You just need another touch. You don't have the Holy Ghost. I need you to ask him to come into your life right now. You will get baptized, but right now, you need to be filled while the Holy Ghost is moving. Open up your mouth. Hot push. Hey, hey, hey. He said he'll give it to you. He said he'll give it to you. He'll give it to you. He'll give it to you. If you ask, it's a gift. I need you to open your mouth. I need you to begin to thank him because the Holy Ghost is falling. The Holy Ghost is falling. I, I, I gotta go. The Holy Ghost is falling. Shana, you must say, I feel the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has fallen. Fall on us. 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 
God bless you. Listen. While the Holy Ghost is moving. While the Holy Ghost is moving. I need, I need you. I need you to sow right now. I need you to sow. Sow into this. Sow into this. Sow into this. Sow into this. Some of you can do a $50 seed. Sow into this. While the Holy Ghost is moving. Why, why 50? It's the number of Pentecost. It's the number of Pentecost. And I need you to sow because while you're sowing, it is the seed of promise. Because when the day of Pentecost came, it brought release. While you're sowing, there's getting ready to be release. I'm done. But there's getting ready to be release. The power of the Holy Ghost is falling. I believe that there are going to be testimonies. You're getting ready to overcome stuff that you couldn't overcome. In Jesus' name, God bless you tonight. Hi, yeah, glory to God. Hallelujah.